Hey everyone, you're probably wondering why I have three different Zephyrus Duos sitting in front of me right now. Well, they all have different GPUs. And this is the type of video I've been wanting to make all year, but I haven't found a way to get all three different GPU configurations in a laptop that has very similar components across all three. It's not perfect, but it's probably the closest I'll be able to get. And another reason why I wanted these specific laptops is I cannot get these things to thermal throttle. Similar to last year's model, these can, these could run on their max load indefinitely. So when I'm doing my game testing and when I'm running my benchmarks, there's nothing in the back of my mind that's making me think that there's some thermal limitations to each of these. So I know I'm getting the best GPU performance out of these. So with that being said, let's talk about the specs of these three GPUs. The 3060 model runs at 140 watts TGP with dynamic boost. The 3070 Ti runs at 150 watts with dynamic boost. The 3080 Ti runs at 165 watts TGP also with dynamic boost. So you may be thinking with the 3080 Ti variant, why am I not using 175 watts TGP? Well, I have tested the GE76 in the past, so you can go back to my previous videos and look at some benchmark numbers of those. And I actually did a dedicated video comparing the 3080 Ti across 150 watts TGP, 165, and 175. And to be honest, I didn't really see much of a difference. And I'd rather keep it as apples to apples as much as possible when it comes to the different laptops. So having all duos, really makes me feel confident that what you're seeing is pretty much the GPU doing what it needs to do to get as high as FPS as possible. Okay, so before I get started, let me talk about my testing methodology. I plugged all three of these into my OLED LG TV using HDMI, and the HDMI ports are connected directly to the dedicated GPU. And I ran all of my benchmarks there, and just to make sure that there's no loss of performance when using HDMI for whatever reason, I tested each one of these laptops on their dedicated screens, then ran the same test on the TV. And I didn't see any difference. And another thing that I did is I kept everything on turbo. I wanted to test these as they come from the factory. And I know you can probably squeeze a little bit of extra performance out of this if you go into manual mode and you crank up all the sliders. And I did test that. And honestly, I saw very minimal differences in terms of FPS when I tried to do when I tried to do any kind of overclocks and I maxed out all the sliders for the CPU. I, I honestly didn't see much of a difference. So with that being said guys, all right, let's get right into it. First let's start with Reddit's favorite benchmark for gaming, it seems. The, the, I feel like the moment a gaming laptop comes out, the first thing everyone on Reddit wants to know is, what's the time spy? What's the time spy? What's the time spy? So the way time spy works is it runs two GPU tests and then a CPU test. The GPU tests isolate only the GPU and the CPU test isolates only the CPU. So it's not always the most indicative of what you're actually gonna see in games. A lot of modern games use a combination of the CPU and the GPU. So I do want to say that Time Spy could be showing results that won't translate into actual game FPS. But with that being said, on the 3060, I'm getting 9,029. On the 3070 Ti, I'm getting 11,435. And on the 3080 Ti, I'm getting 12,825 on just a GPU. And now you might be thinking that these scores are a lot lower than what you're seeing on Reddit. And all those guys are essentially just overclocking their machines to the max to where it gives them the best possible time spy scores, but it's not able to play any games. It's going to crash, you're going to see artifacts, and it just won't play properly typically don't overclock my personal laptops when I'm gaming. I feel like it causes more issues than it solves. You barely get any of an increase in FPS. It's not like you're going to turn your 3060 into a 3070 Ti, or you're not, you're not going to turn your 3070 Ti into a 3080 Ti from overclocking. 
So, enough with the benchmarks. How about we start talking about some real games? On Horizon Zero Dawn, so let's start with the 1080p results. Okay, so on the 3060, I'm getting 92 FPS. On the 3070 Ti, I'm getting 103. And on the 3080 Ti, I'm getting 122 FPS. It's, at least in 1080p, it's scaling up the way I feel like it should in terms of the different tiers of, uh, um, of GPUs. Granted, the price difference is way too high between something like the 3070 Ti and the 3080 Ti. But that could be a conversation for another video. In 1440p, the 3060 is getting 74 FPS, the 3070 Ti is getting 87 FPS, and the 3080 Ti is getting 105 FPS. But looking at the 3070 Ti versus the 3080 Ti, the difference between 87 FPS and 105 FPS is fairly sizable. I think that's something that you would visually be able to notice. Finally, let's look at 4K. I did not include the 4K results for the 3060 Ti because there were some weird glitches as the benchmark was running. So on the 3070 Ti, you're getting 50 FPS in 4K. And on the 3080 Ti, you're getting 61 FPS in 4K. And I really feel like Nvidia tuned these GPUs purposely in that manner. And I have seen this across a few different games. They were kind of forcing you to get the 3080 Ti if you plan on playing in 4K. So if you want to get 60 FPS, in 4K, you kind of have to go with the 3080 Ti. So next I want to test Guardians of the Galaxy. This is a heavier title in terms of um, processing and GPU load. And, I'm, and I cranked up the RTX settings all the way to Ultra and I'm using DLSS quality. So at 1080p on the 3060, I got 94 FPS. On the 3070 Ti, I got 103 FPS. And on the 3080 Ti, I got 107 FPS. So there's actually a fairly sizable jump between the 3060 and the 3070 Ti, but the difference between 103 and 107 on the 3070 Ti versus the 3080 Ti isn't really that much. But that's just 1080p. So when we move over to 1440p, on the 3060, you're getting 71 FPS. On the 3070 Ti, you're getting 85 FPS. And on the 3080 Ti, you're getting 94 FPS. So it's actually really nice to see that across all three different GPUs, you're able to get playable results at both 1080p and at 1440p. And on 4K, I didn't test it on the 3060. I tried to, but it essentially looked like a slideshow. I was probably getting like two or three FPS. And I'm assuming that um, I ran out of VRAM when turning on ray tracing. On the 3070 Ti, I got 49 FPS. And on the 3080 Ti, I got 56 FPS. One thing I want to point out about the 4K results is it might only be a difference of 7 frames or, um, or 12%, but the difference between 49 and 56 is visually identifiable. You will get a smoother experience looking at 56 FPS versus 49. At least here in the US, that'll be a $500 upcharge to go from a 3070 Ti to a 3080 Ti, and that's what it seems like to be across all the different laptops I've looked at, from MSI to Razer to even this particular Zephyrus Duo model. So you kind of have to determine if, it, if that's worth it for you. So now let's look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this is a particular test that every reviewer covers because it's a really, really good test. Um, this particular game uses both the GPU, the CPU, and actually there are some instances where the RAM can make a bit of a difference. So that is one thing I want to point out about the models I have here. The 3060 model only has 16 gigabytes of RAM. So that's something to keep in mind as I'm going through some of these numbers. On the 3060 at 1080p, I'm getting 114 FPS. On the 3070 Ti, I'm getting 136. And you might be thinking that is a fairly big jump. It is between the 3060 and the 3070 Ti. That's about a 20% difference. And it may be the RAM. I don't know. But that's just kind of what I'm seeing. And I, I want to keep it this way because more than likely, if you're buying a 3060 laptop, you're going to be getting 16 gigabytes of RAM. And on the 3080 Ti, you're getting 147 FPS. At 1440p, on the 3060, you're getting 77 FPS. 
On the 3070Ti, you're getting 100 FPS, and on the 3080Ti, you're getting 113 FPS. All three GPUs are playable up to 1440p, actually even 4K. So on the 3060, you're actually able to get 40 FPS in 4K, and a game like this is very playable at 40 FPS. On the 3070 Ti, you're getting 54 FPS, and on the 3080 Ti, you're getting 62 FPS. Kind of coming back to what I was saying, NVIDIA is pretty much telling you that if you want to play certain games on 4K at 60 FPS, you're going to have to go with the 3080 Ti. Next to Cyberpunk, I tested this in ultra settings with the LSS quality, so essentially I just set the preset to ultra, and the only change I made was switching it from DLSS Auto to DLSS Quality. So with that being said, on the 3060 at 1080p, you're getting 46 FPS. And on the 3070 Ti, you're getting 59 FPS. It was actually 59.8, so let's just say 60 FPS. And on the 3080 Ti, you're getting 71.8, let's just say 72 FPS on the 3080 Ti. And these are sizable jumps. These these are visually noticeable, going from 46 to 59, and then going from 59 to even 71. You will be able to tell the difference. It's just depending on how important that is to you, but that's just 1080p. Let's look at 1440p. On the 3060, you're getting 21 FPS. On the 3070 Ti, you're getting 38 FPS. And on the 3080 Ti, you're getting 48 FPS. So at 1440p on Cyberpunk, in the settings that I want to play this game at, the 3060 is unfortunately not playable. And now for and now in 4K, I don't know why I decided to run the benchmark, but I only got 5.6 FPS at 3060. On the 3070 Ti, I got 17 FPS, and on the 3080 Ti, I got 24 FPS. So none of the so at 4K, Cyberpunk is not playable this year on a laptop GPU. But what you can do is shift from DLSS quality to DLSS performance or even ultra performance, and it still looks fantastic. At 4K, DLSS ultra performance still looks great and still very playable, and in my opinion, still looks better than 4240p with DLSS quality. All right, so Red Dead Redemption is next. So on the 3060, you're getting 62 FPS. On the 3070 Ti, you're getting 87.91 FPS. Let's just say 88. And on the 3080 Ti, you're getting 98 FPS. And at 1440p, on the 3060, you're getting 47 FPS. And on the 3070 Ti, you're getting 71 FPS. And on the 3080 Ti, you're getting 79.4 FPS at 1440p. So on all three GPUs at 1080p and 1440p, you're getting a playable experience. So at 4K, I actually did test it with DLSS because that's where DLSS shines the most. So on the 3070 Ti, I got 54.98 FPS. And on the 3080 Ti, I got 61.62 FPS. So both playable at 4K. Okay, so next is Metro Exodus. This game came out a long time ago, but it is still a hog. A lot of, a lot of desktops can't even run this game properly yet. So on the 3060 at 1080p, I'm getting 54.83 FPS. And on the 3070 Ti, I'm getting 76 FPS. And on the 3080 Ti, I'm getting 79.9, let's just say 80 FPS. So the difference between the 3070 Ti and the 3080 Ti is not much here. So at 1440p on the 36, you're getting 41 FPS. 37 Ti, you're getting 56 FPS. And on the 3080 Ti, you're getting 62.35 FPS. And I'm seeing so many situations like this where, depending on the game, the 3080 Ti is just barely hitting 60 FPS to where I'm almost thinking that this is purposely done by NVIDIA. And on 4K, I don't think this is very playable. You might just need to switch down to DLSS performance or maybe DLSS ultra performance on this particular title. But again, on 4K, performance DLSS looks amazing still. Next, let's talk about Horizon Zero Dawn. At 1080p, on the 3060, you're getting 42 FPS. 
On the 3070 Ti, you're getting 88 FPS, and on the 3080 Ti, you're getting 93 FPS. At 1440p, on the 3060, you're getting 38 FPS, and on the 3070 Ti, you're getting 75 FPS. On the 3080 Ti, you're getting 81 FPS. There is something about this game where jumping from the 3060 to the 3070 Ti makes a gigantic gigantic difference. Half of what the 3070 Ti is, and you haven't been seeing that in other games, but I mean, I test this. It is, I guess it just, it, it is what it is. All right, so that kind of concludes the benchmarks that I've done. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if the 3080 Ti is worth it to you. Do you want the extra frames in 4K, or do you just want the best to where you're not thinking in the back of your head, oh, maybe if I had the 3080 Ti versus the 3070 Ti or the 3060, that I might have a more enjoyable experience. Or are you just really more budget focused and the 3060 is more than good enough? And just looking at this, I'm still very surprised at how capable the 3060 is. 3070 Ti, they say, is a sweet spot, and I'm definitely seeing that here. But if you want the best of the best, the 3080 Ti is it. And you are seeing enough of a boost in certain titles. Whether that's worth, at least here in the US, a $500 premium is completely up to you. It might give you a bit of extra future proofing, maybe by one year. So maybe next year when the new, next range of laptops come out, that version, whether it's called the 4070, might perform as well as a 3080 Ti. And that alone might be worth it enough to you. So one thing I do want to point out is the 3080 Ti does have more VRAM, 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And there are some situations, I know um, Resident Evil Village was one of them, where the 3070 Ti pretty much didn't have enough VRAM, and especially if you try to play that game at 4K, to where the 3080 Ti might be worth it for you, just, just for that reason. Anyway, let me know what you think. This video is kind of long and boring, even for me, even, <laughs> even though I care about this stuff, but... the. the just talking numbers all day just reminds me of work. So <laughs> I am kind of glad this video is over, but I hope it was helpful for you. And if you did get any kind of value out of this, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and go back and look at some of my other videos if, you, if, if, if you're in the market for any of the laptops I've covered.